Well, forgot to start recording, but in any case, <clears throat> call sign scooter, and it's been a while. Welcome. This lesson deals with traffic procedure with F-47-2. The focus on the ramp. We are already hot on the ramp. The aircraft is in the same condition in which you left it after completing lesson one to start up. I will guide you through two procedures, before taxi and taxi. You will request taxi transmission C and taxi to the holding port for runway 07. Note that for the moment this lesson doesn't cover steps 9, ARI. Well, I got it looks like I gotta make one small adjustment. Two let's see, rudder. Uh, let's see, access tune, I want to invert it, okay. 13 AFCS and 14 okay. stab off. Okay, yeah, understand. Good. Let's begin with the before taxi procedure. This procedure ensures that all systems are prepared to enable you to taxi safely. We want to ask the crew chief to help check their systems because, simply put, we can't see them from the cockpit. In this lesson, we will use TAC and navigation as our first choice, so we will set up our navigation equipment accordingly. Okay. First, set the UHF next. Check that the radio's preset manual switch is set to preset. It is on preset? The preset channel stored in the radio's memory. Okay. Now rotate the comms channel selector knob to select preset channel 5, which is the frequency of coagulated power. Set the TACAN mode selector to the TR position for transmit receive. Check that the TACAN channel display is showing 067 X-ray. This is the TACAN station located directly at Coagulated Airfield. Okay, yeah. Now change the navigation input to TAC for TACAN. And set the navigation mode to TAC as well. Set the IFS master switch to the standby position. Good. Now, okay. check the radar altimeter on the instrument panel. The white off flag should have disappeared from view. Okay, yeah. It is, it is gone. For the moment, we will set the radar altimeter to zero feet. This avoids having the red low altitude warning light illuminated during the upcoming tasks. You may set an arbitrary value to check if the lamp is working correctly and then set it back to zero. Okay, it works. On the altimeter, set the correct QNH. According to the current MET report, it is 2984. The altimeter should then show the field elevation of 60 feet plus or minus 75 feet. Remember the reading value. Okay. We'll reset the static pressure compensator, the SPC, by moving the CAD switch forward. Then check that the amber static correct light on the telepanel goes out and remains out. The altimeter reading does not exceed plus or minus 25 feet from the original reading you remembered. And the altimeter indicates the field elevation within a maximum tolerance of 90 feet. Okay, yeah. Is that okay? The sack by KF goes out and remains out. Yeah, but turn reader does not exceed 25 plus or minus 25 feet from the original reading we remembered, which okay, we're good. <clears throat> Within a tolerance of 90 feet. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Remember the value again, then reset the altimeter. This is done by turning the switch on the lower right corner to the reset position and holding it there until the red standby flag disappears. Then Check that the indicated altitude does not vary more than plus or minus 75 feet, okay. and the altimeter still indicates the field elevation within plus or minus 75 feet. That's true. Good. Now check the speed brakes. Command the brakes in, and the corresponding light on the telepanel should be extinguished. Uh, speed brakes in. Uh, what are the controls for that? <clears throat> I did not look that up. Uh, okay, maybe I did. 
break in is left shift B and then out is right control. Okay. 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 Now, command the speed brakes to out. And observe the corresponding light on the telepanel is illuminated. The crew chief should also report speed brakes out. Yep. Speed brakes out. Okay, yep. Yeah. They did. Okay, there should be three down. Then set the flaps and flaps to out and down and release the step. Fully depressed the left rudder pedal. Rudder left. 
Okay. Runner right looks good. Okay. Good. Release the left. Runner left. left. Fully to press the right runner pedal. Runner right looks good. Release the right runner pedal. Move the stick full left. Full left. While holding the stick fully left, engage the yaw stab augmentation by moving the yaw stab aug switch forward. Rudder kick. Rudder left. While still holding the stick fully left, depress the emergency quick release lever and keep it depressed. Okay, now release the emergency quick release lever. Alright. And bring the stick back to center. Disengage the off stab log by moving the switch to the rear. I wonder why the cursor is black still. Okay, now move the stick full right. Full right. Okay. While holding the stick full right, engage the off stab on. Rudder <laughs> kick. While still holding stick full right, Rudder right looks good. Press the emergency quick release lever and keep it depressed. Okay, now release the lever. And bring the stick back to center. Finally, disengage the off stab on. Okay. Set the slats and flaps to the norm position. Okay. The next two steps need the INS set to nav mode by the WIZO. I did that already and informed you that you are cleared prime and sync. Okay. And then set the compass mode control knob to the sync position for a few seconds and release it. Okay, canceling. Tell me when you're ready. To emerge your Lights attitude up. indicator. For this, press Slats the K down page knob and observe the red off flag disappear. Also, okay. match the miniature aircraft symbol with the horizon bar by rotating the knob accordingly. Okay. Check that all three stab log switches are set to off the taxi. They are? Set trim to three units nose down. Are you dude? This should be a good setting for the planned takeoff under current conditions. Note, with three units nose down trim, expect a nose heavy tendency on the takeoff roll, which quickly approaches a trimmed condition as the aircraft lifts off and the gear flaps are retracted. With one unit nose down trim, a very marked nose up trim occurs after approximately 230 knots, requiring a large nose down trim change at a very low altitude. Okay, no, we already did that, so. Now check the function of the trim indicator. To do this, huh? simply confirm that the trim indicator needle followed your commands. Set the and flaps to out and down. No Again? I highly recommend to perform all takeoffs with sets and flaps out and down. Because of the high risk of overall flaps and a possible tail strike, turn your takeoff flaps with down. flaps up and in. Okay. Set the optical sight on the HUD to stand by or cage, whichever you prefer. Okay. Set the pneumatic pressure indicator. It should show values within normal limits. Which it looks like it's within the green. Check the IFS system. To self-test modes 2 and 3 alpha, place the IFS master switch to the norm position and hold the switch for the mode being tested to the upper test position. If the test light on the IFS control panel illuminates, it indicates that the mode is operating properly. Mode 1 and mode C do not have a self-test feature. Note, mode 1 and 2 are usually assigned in the briefing. Mode 2 is set in the nose wheel well during pre-flight. Mode 3 is assigned by ATC, and mode 4 is selected at the start of the mission. The switch for the mode being tested. 
sprint. These are the test positions, right? It doesn't quite help that I can't read, so we'll just say it's done. Second set the radar altimeter. After confirming that the radar altimeter off flag is still not visible, perform the following actions. Press the function control switch. Then, check that the pointer moves to 35 plus minus 15 feet and stabilizes. Okay. Then check that the low altitude warning light illuminates. Then, with the function control switch still pressed, move the reference marker above and below the pointer. The low altitude warning light must come on within five feet of the indicated altitude. Release the function control switch, move the reference marker to below five feet, and check that the low altitude warning light is off and the pointer fluctuates. Okay, done. Now set the reference to 550 feet. This is to give you an appropriately early warning when reaching the minimum altitude above ground level in flight. When you are ready to taxi, make sure that the throttles are idle and you are ready for wheel brakes in case they are needed. Also make sure you know how to engage the emergency brake in case all means of braking fail for any reason. Finally, ask the crew chief to remove the wheel chops. Roger. And the wheel chocks are out. Go get them, sir. Pew, 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 pew. Disconnecting. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. All right. So that's done. Task one, before taxi procedure completed. Okay, now go through the before taxi procedure checklist on your own to make sure all the mold items were done. Yep. Good. Now we are able to perform the taxi procedure. We will taxi to the holding point of Runway 07 and make a full stop there. For this, we have to taxi straight out, then left, and finally straight ahead to the west until we reach the holding point. The marshal car in front of us will lead us. Here are some tips for safe taxiing. Always use minimum power necessary. A maximum of 75% is a good rule of thumb. Apply power very gently. And once the aircraft is rolling, reduce power. Do not taxi faster than 20 knots, except when the tax race and the situation allows. I will request taxi clearance whenever you are ready to go. Okay. Roger, I'm taking comms fan for now. Probability Tower, Dodge 21, Radio Advance 25, request taxi. Okay. Okay, we have taxi clearance. Carefully advance the throttles until the aircraft starts rolling. Be gentle with the throttles. Slightly apply both wheel brake pedals while taxi is straight ahead in order to check if the wheel brakes work. It is not necessary to completely stop the aircraft. A noticeable brake in action is good enough. Man, it just sounds so real. Let me turn those wheels steering on. Keep the rudder neutral, then press and hold the nose gear steering button on the stick. While the aircraft is slowly rolling forward, gently apply left and right rudder. Observe the aircraft following your commands. 
so you have to keep it pressed. Oh, that is... That's crazy. Okay, well, I will say uh, the cockpit modeling in VR is really, really well done. Um, I mean, it is... Yeah, it's really well done. Um, so I've been able to sit in a real Phantom a few times, and yeah, it's just this is basically what it looks like. You're in terms of the taxway, check that the ADI, HSI, and the standby compass turn accordingly. How can I with all these buttons I gotta hold down? Finally, check that the oxygen system is set to fall our way. Oxygen mode switch to normal. Oxygen mixture switch to normal. And okay. finally, oxygen supply switch to on. All right, yeah, that's, that's all good. Continue attacks behind the marshaler and stop the aircraft at the holding point for runway 07. Which we've done. We're at the holding point. I think. Man, these engine sounds are amazing. Maybe the holding point is on the way. Well, let's close the canopy. I'm just going to see about doing a takeoff. His canopy is closed. However, I I can't hear him. Oh, let's see. Go uh, full aft on the stick, and we'll go ahead and increase the throttles. Like we're off, we gear up. Checking flight cockpit configuration. Good, the in flight config is now okay.
This is gonna be a little bit really used to. So it looks like the flaps are up and everything. Okay. Right, there's a reticle. Okay, I guess that's as far as you can go. Departing from the planned flight corridor. Still not within the planned flight corridor. It's fine. Uh, let's see. Navigation. Let's see. Good. We are back in our planned corridor. Okay, so we're about five miles away. So where is my um I swear I can smell the hydraulics in here. I swear. So we just passed the waypoint. No, I didn't think I'd be able to see everything shake in um, VR, but it's a. Uh, looks really good. Now, frame rate wise, it's about the same as uh, the F4. I don't even know what the flight corridor is. Uh, navigation, go to... It's waypoint 10 then. We are still not within the planned oh. flight corridor. Gonna need to see if I can handle going up to 
Um, Return to the good. We are back in our planned corridor. What do you call? A higher texture quality to read a little bit clearer. Like, uh, I can read all the instruments and most things up in the center, but then once I get down to the other control panels for the light switches, radios, TACAN, IFF. Yeah, those are the important ones. Just on the right side. When I, I can't read all of them there. So if those items are going to be important, then... Oh boy. But yeah, uh, so yeah, frame rate wise, frame rate wise, as it stands, yeah, pretty much the same as the F14. Um, I mean, you can clearly see the edges um, in VR. At least, at least, when the video comes out, you'll see it. Okay, so there's the runway. On. Which one was it for Tekken? Anyway, so it'll be interesting to see as I continue on. I've, I have done the engine startup already. Um, so that's been pretty interesting. A lot of button holding. So it looks like on landing it's going to be kind of a, a crazy thing. But we'll see how it all shakes out uh, in upcoming videos. But hopefully we'll see some more. Uh, Phantom we are videos. From the planned flight corridor. Oh, it looks good though. That's fine. All right, yeah, so I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, you may not hear from me for a little bit because I'll be practicing aim nines, aim sevens, drag bombs, dumb bombs. Good, we are back in our planned corridor. How do you know? Anyway, um, Dumb bombs, smart bombs, mavericks. I'll be practicing with all those things before I start seeing. At that point, hopefully, we'll see some campaign type missions for the F4. I don't, I don't know if uh, the DCC will have it up quite right now, but I'll try to find something to kind of help with uh, just flying the uh, the Phantom. But yeah, this will probably be uh, my next main aircraft to fly. And it's kind of special for me because uh, 
it's the first aircraft that I've sat in that I can remember. I mean, the first ever that I've been able to sit in was a Phantom, so... Uh, I liked it first before the Viper. And... The only reason I liked the Viper more was because at the time, Falcon was a thing. And that was way more detailed. We are departing from the planned flight corridor. Thank you. But that was more detailed than the Phantom in like Wings Over Vietnam or uh, Cold War Gone Hot in the uh, Strike Fighter series. Because those were the only games that were out at the time Good. that Falcon 4 was corridor. out. And then also when, what was the other one? Allied Force, Falcon Allied Force had come out. So I stuck with the Viper because that was the most realistic simulator at the time. But now we have the Phantom in DCS with all of its systems modeled for the most part. I don't think the Shrike is ready yet, but I'll be happy to kind of do some seed missions or sea ad Good missions. And then, um, or also dead missions. So that'd be kind of cool to kind of. We are departing from the planned flight corridor. Okay. But in any case, I just want to try and taxi and take off and see how that works before uh, I move on. Again, I'll be flying a lot. I'll see if I'll film the training stuff in the future. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see. But in any case, uh, this is Call Sign Scooter. I'm going to be signing out right now. It was just a quick little VR test. This is the first time I've actually loaded up in VR. I did the engine start outside of VR. And that was kind of difficult, but you'll probably see those engine starts and full missions coming up soon, I really hope. All right. Well, until then, thanks for being patient and not uploading for, I don't know, a couple months now. Uh, hopefully I have uh, more motivation to do more aviation videos. But uh, we'll see you on the next one and on the next flight. Yeah.